You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, Litecoin, and more. Cryptocurrencies and other digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity. Provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments on everything from coins to tokens, futures, and even OTC options. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on the Crypto Rundown. This program is brought to you by Genesis Volatility, also known as GVOL, home of institutional-grade crypto options analytics. Whether you're trading CFI options or DeFi options, cryptocurrencies move. Use GVOL Analytics to analyze implied volatility, model realized volatility, structure positions, and unlock alpha. For more information, visit gvol.io. That's G-V-O-L dot I-O. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again for the Crypto Rundown, the program here on the Options Insider Radio Network, where we explore the depths of the crypto derivatives market. What's going on in the world of Bitcoin and ETH and Solana? What's going on from a volume and volatility and skew and OI and all sorts of fun perspectives? What are the hot positions? What's going on out there? We're going to find out on the crypto rundown this week my name is mark longo coming at you from the options insider.com as well as of course from the options insider radio network upon which so many of you are just mainlining these days welcome to all of you new folks we know there's many new folks joining all the time out there if you like what you hear keep rating and reviewing so new folks can continue to discover not just this show but the entire network if you're just coming in for crypto we love you but hey you're missing out on the entire network there's pretty much close to a dozen shows coming at you, usually a couple of shows a day out there. If you want education, Education Wednesday, Options Bootcamp, Options Playbook Radio, two great shows for you folks to dive into. Of course, with the crypto folks, This Week in Futures Options is also the program that touches on crypto content here on the network. That's every Thursday. Of course, you can get it all wherever you get your favorite podcast. Just subscribe to the full network feed and then strap in because a lot of content is coming your way. If you want even more above and beyond that, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Exclusive pro Q&As, exclusive options out of these shows, exclusive live streams throughout the week, as well as exclusive giveaways, all available for you over there. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more as we commence with the fun, the joy, the parte that is the Bitcoin breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trending activity, trends and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. All right, everyone. Welcome to the Bitcoin Breakdown, the portion of the show where we break down all the action in the world's leading digital asset. Of course, the big dog, which is Bitcoin. And it's kind of looking unched for all the drama that's unfolded since our last show. It's looking pretty much unched, slightly higher than we were this time last week. Last week on the show, we were at 19,052. Coming in to start today's show, 19,100. So almost 50 handles north of where we were this time last week. Of course, we did a little bit of living in between episodes. Pretty much all of it last Tuesday. <laughs> Rockin' day 
for the crypto markets. We got as low as 18635 and also as high as 19422 A decent range. All of that intraday. All of that on Tuesday. Uh, the rest of the week kind of hanging out. So that's why our vol is also kind of hanging out coming into the start of the show. The average at the money vol out there for Bitcoin. Again, if you want to find these analytics for yourselves, Genesis Volatility, gvol.io is the place to go to kick the tires and light those fires out. You too can run numbers like the vol out here and see that we're hanging out at about a 69, which is pretty much about exactly where we were this time last week, a half a point below where we were at this time last week. So the vol kind of hanging out as Bitcoin is kind of hanging out around the same level from what it, where it was this time a week ago. Same thing for BitVol. If we go out to our friend Simon Ho over there at T3 Index, we check out his BitVol level, 70 and a half right now, down exactly a point. We were 71 and a half this time last week. Remember, that's a rolling 30-day metric. It's more of like a Bitcoin VIX, so an intriguing number to look at out there. In terms of skew, what's going on from a skew perspective? Remember, the more negative we get, the more juice is piling into those puts over those calls. At the end of the day, that skews a pretty basic number. It's just the vol for the call wing and the vol for the put wing. You subtract the puts from the calls, and you get this number. Last week, we were negative, negative 4.3. This week, even more negative, negative 6.5. So still looking negative after, for years, the bid was all to the upside in crypto. It could do naught but go up. These days, things have changed a little bit out there. In terms of bit skew, Simon's other number that he runs over there at T3 Index it's looking a little bit frothier this week as well. 99 and a quarter coming in to start it. Today's show, 95.6 at the end of last week's show. Let's get on out to the OI, see what you folks are up to out there. It looks like it's grown a little bit out there in terms of, again, all these numbers coming at you from Deribit listeners. Um, 170,000 calls open on Deribit right now. It's up about 15,000, so a little bit of a change. Again, it's kind of like I think the theme for this week is holding steady. Holding steady. Vol is holding steady. Price levels are holding steady. OI. Kind of holding steady for the most part. Puts 97,000 contracts open there. That's up about 13,000 as well. So again, the ratio is holding steady as well because they're both up close to 15,000 this week. So we're still not quite. We're a little bit below the two to one. We're pretty close to that two to one level there still in Bitcoin. You want stronger ratios. Wait till we get to Ethan Solana. That'll, that'll mix things up a little bit. In terms of OI, what are the size positions right now? out there in ETH options on Deribit. Let us find out together, shall we? Let's start at the bottom. Number five, it is the 45,000 strike. 11,000 contracts still open way up there on the 45,000 strike. Are they vestigial positions from a while ago when folks were a little bit more optimistic about all things Bitcoin? Are they perhaps uh, kind of out of the money overwrites? Not getting a lot for the 45,000 strike now, but maybe back when they sold these, they did. Either way, there's 11,000 open on that strike, and actually new positioning there, up about 500 contracts. It's not a lot, but it's something. Uh, the f- number four, we have the 40,000 strike. That has 12,000 contracts open. That's also up 500 this week, so maybe a bit of a 40,000, 45,000 vertical going up. It is interesting that the OI numbers are lining up so nicely this week. Number three, we have a newcomer to the top five. It is the 18,000 strike. So that, again, kind of shows you where we were flirting with over the course of the past week. We've never really seen an 18,000 strike in our top five, but this week it is there with 12,400 contracts open. Again, that's a newcomer this week, so we don't have the change from last week. In terms of number two, the 20,000 strike has 13,600 contracts open. That's up about 1,100. And the number one size position still in Bitcoin options, it has been for some time, remains still this week. The 25,000 strike has 14,600 contracts open. That's up, actually, I should say that's unched, literally unched from where it was this time last week. So no big changes on the 25,000 strike. A little bit more piling in on the 20,000 strike. And some newcomers joining us in the top five this week as well. Where are you hanging out from an OI perspective? Where are your positions in Bitcoin options? Hit us up. Let us know, listeners. We want to hear from you folks. We like to hear what's on your brain in the crypto landscape out there. In terms of action, what was the most action-packed day from a volume perspective on Deribit since our last show? It was the 21st, so a couple of days after our last show. With about 40,500 contracts going up on the tape. So not actually Tuesday when we had the big range, but the day after, Wednesday. Uh, that Of course, our last show was pretty active as well, the 19th. That had about 33,000 contracts as well. So we were kind of keeping an eye on the show day last week to see if that was going to be our big Rock'em and Sock'em day. But it was not. It was the 21st, two days later. In terms of CME, what's going on out there on the CME front? You know what, listeners? You guys can find this report 
for yourselves as well. If you listen to our TRIFO program, This Week in Futures Options, you know to go on over to cmegroup.com slash TWIFO. That's the name of our show, T-W-I-F-O. If you go there, you'll be able to generate a whole bunch of free reports for all the different products that they trade over there at CME. So lean hogs, corn, gold, S&P, whatever the heck floats your boat. And if you go down to the cryptocurrency section, you could see these numbers are talking about here, including the Bitcoin numbers out here. Big Bitcoin options. Remember, this is still the big beefy one, the 5X contract. So you're still talking a pretty sizable notional amount, even though it is a lot lower than when Bitcoin was hanging out around 60,000, obviously. A decent week last week, about almost 700 contracts on the tape. Again, it's not a ton, but for the history of this product, it's actually a pretty decent week. Anything that's even close to 1,000 contracts is, is pretty aggressive. There were many weeks where we saw 20 contracts going up out here. So this is starting to grow out there. In terms of the micro Bitcoin options, well, that's another one where we kind of see some interesting ebbs and flows out there. We're actually seeing almost as many big Bitcoin options trading last week as we saw micros, which is kind of strange. Only 804 micros on the tape. Last week, in terms of this week, let's see if any paper is lighting it up out here this week. Oh, a whopping 13 changing hands this week on the micros. And in terms of the big Bitcoin options, 107. So actually a decent day. If you're wondering what the what the action is out here right now, it's the 21,000 calls doing a whopping 41 contracts. In terms of last week, let's see what the big dog was last week on a pretty active week for the big options. It was the 11,500 puts doing nearly 100 contracts. That's and there were trading pretty actively all week as well. So it looks like actually an 11,500, 19,500 vertical traded a few times over the course of last week. So that's, that's an intriguing vertical, 19,500, 11,500. Maybe they're buying some protection on that 19,500, which is pretty much in the money now, and then selling that 11. They're not getting a lot for that 11,500 put if you are doing that. It's kind of a vestigial leg of that vertical. But say, Lavi, we've seen weirder things going up out here. So that's what's going up out there on CME as we keep on rolling, listeners, into the altcoin universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right, everybody, welcome to the Altcoin Universe, the portion of the show where we explore the action and everything outside of the big dog, which is Bitcoin, except for right now when we dive into the hot, contentious fray that is the battle for the top 10 market cap positions out there in the crypto universe. Number 10, once again, our old buddy, Mr. Doge, still hanging out there at number 10, managing to maintain its death grip out there, just a little north of $8 billion worth of market cap. Again, that's good enough. For the number 10 spot, number 9, Solana, closing in on 12 billion, about 11.8 billion. Number 8, Cardano, 15.3 billion. Number 7, Binance USD, 20 and a half billion. Number 6, it's XRP. Looking a little bit more robust this week. Again, there have been a lot of rumors of late that we're going to see something, something out there in XRP. It seems like the XRP folks and the SEC both want a judgment. They want to see some sort of result for this, this ongoing legal brouhaha out here. So, Perhaps uh, we shall see. Looks like a little bit more robust out there as a result. Twenty three point six billion out there in XRP land. Have you guys been following this XRP brouhaha? Or have you kind of washed your hands of it because it's dragged on for so long? It's not really available on most of the major platforms, at least here in the U.S. You may want to trade it on. So I could see if a lot of you have kind of looked elsewhere for the last couple of years. Number five, BNB, forty four point four 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 billion. <laughs> a lot of words out there for BNB this week. Number four, USD coin. $49.44 billion. So a lot of fours floating around this week. If only the $44.444 billion was for number four, then it would have been perfect. Number three, Tether, $67, almost $68 billion worth of market cap this week. Numero due, it's ETH, $162. And the number one, pretty small number one, but still number one, is Bitcoin, $367 billion worth of market cap. Let's get on out to the number two in terms of market cap, number one in a lot of your hearts. It is ETH. Another one that's kind of hanging out this week. <laughs> 1333 on our last show, 1324 this show. So down a whopping, not even nine handles, about 8.7 handles. Over the course of the past week, once again, Tuesday, the big rock'em sock'em day. And I put that in air quotes because it wasn't that, that much of a range for ETH. 
But the low for the week hit on Tuesday, 1269. That was the low, the high 1343. So not even a hundred point range on the week out there. Another reason why the vol is actually continuing to come in out there on ETH. We had about a 90 exactly on our show last week, this week, 86 and a quarter. So down three and three quarters points from a vol perspective out there. Skew wise, that's interesting because last week we were negative 5.2. It seemed like in some of these products, maybe we were starting to move towards even to maybe even positive again. And yet uh, this last week we've seen ETH continuing to trend negative from a skew perspective down to a negative nine and a quarter. So that negative skew almost doubling. So Clearly a lot more interest out there in the puts over the course of the past week, even though still from an OI perspective, it's still all calls all the time. It's pretty much four to one. It's over four to one now out here in the OI. It's 4.03 million calls open on Deribit right now. That's up 103,000 this time last week. The puts, 952,000. That's up about 26,000. So the puts have a ways to go before they even get in four to one range. <laughs> so there's still a heck of a lot of OI in the calls out here in ETH listeners, uh, the puts have a ways to go to catch up with the skew. Still looking pretty negative, which is kind of interesting out there. You know, we were talking on the show last week with our guest, Greg Magadini, about how the ETH merge may be a bit of a non-event. Be interesting to see what you folks think out there in terms of action. Was that really the, the non-event, perhaps? We were thinking about, in terms of action, our last show day was kind of the big action day out there. 612,000 contracts, so not a huge amount of paper going up over the course of the past week. Let's get on out to uh, the OI, see what kind of shakeups, if there were any, in the top five size positions out here in ETH options. Right now, number five, we have the 5,000 strike, so... Looking kind of optimistic up there. 195,000, up about 1,000 contracts. Number four, we get cut right in half to the 2,500 strike. That has 273,000 contracts open. That's up about 4,000 from this time last week. Number three, the 3,500 strikes are hanging out kind of in the middle there. 349,000 contracts open there. That's actually down about 3,000 from this time last week. Numero due, we have the 4,000 strike. That has 411,000 contracts open. That's up about 2,000. And the number one size position out here, in ETH options yet again this week, it is the 3,000 strike. That has just been a magnet for a lot of you out there. Even though this week it is down. There's 462,000 contracts open there. It's down 33,000. That's the first time we've seen that strike fall in a while. And, of course, we get uh, fully through the end of the month. We see September roll off the board. It'll take some more of that OI with it. So interesting stuff. Are you folks lining up on the 3,000 strike? you have other positions on? Hit us up. Let us know out there. Let's get on out to the... CME Ether products. Remember, we just launched the big Ether options out there at CME. In fact, we had the head of CME Crypto on our TWIFO program just a week ago to talk about all these products and what's been going on out there. So check out that episode if you want to learn more about CME, what they're doing in the crypto space, how they want to address things like the quote unquote CME gap, you know, where their products end on Friday and the rest of the crypto world trades throughout the weekend. So interesting things like that. Check out that episode of TWIFO. Uh, the options launched on the 12th just a couple of weeks ago. So we don't really have a ton of data yet in here for the big Ether options. Remember, that's a 50x multiplier too. So that is not aimed at you or I. That is aimed at the big institutions. Clearly, they're hoping to create another product down the road that is similar to Bitto, but for ETH. An ETHO, call it what you will. <laughs> That'll be interesting to see if we do get a big ETF playing in those futures and driving some paper out there. And of course, we see some folks playing in the options as a result. In terms of micro ETH options, if you've been listening to this show, or we talked about it a lot on TWIFO, if you also listened to our pro Q&A with Carly Garner last week, we also talked about it there. Micro ETH options have been popping up a lot on our radar on a lot of our shows of late. Maybe not for the best reason. It's mostly because the liquidity out there is, I've called it in the past, staccato. It kind of big burst and then nothing, and then big burst and then nothing. And then last week was kind of a quiet week, only about 4,000 contracts on the tape. Again, you can find this for yourselves if you go into that semigroup.com slash TWIFO report and then select the cryptocurrencies. You can see all the Bitcoin and Ether that you ever could possibly want to see over there, at least from a CME perspective. So not even 4,000 contracts on the tape last week. Uh, the big contract, again, the 1300s, that is a, a popular level, obviously, because that's where we're hanging out. It's pretty much the at-the-money strike. I also saw the 1500s going up last week. But again, it was another case of 
some paper one day and then nothing the next. We've seen a lot more paper going up out there in the micro ether options as well. We've seen 20 plus thousand contract weeks. So not a lot going out there the last week. And then this week, uh, kind of a quiet start to the week, not even 400 contracts on the tape. The big, the big trade this week so far today, the big trade today, really 1500 calls, whopping 285 going up. So let us know if you've been dipping your toes in the micro ether options. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on it, listeners, and what your experience has been like. Have you had issues with the liquidity? Has it been easy to get in and out? I'd be curious to hear your feedback because they are still fairly new products and the paper is still kind of light out there. So I'm curious what you folks are thinking. Speaking of light paper, let's get on out to Solana. We had our guest Greg on last week after asking us for so long to get the Solana in there. He was a little bit disappointed, he thought, in terms of how much OI is is actually lining up out there in Solana. Let's investigate for ourselves this week and see what's going on out there. Solana coming into the start of this show was about 33, 40, 32 and three quarters on our last show. So up not even 75 cents, but it still remains stubbornly north of that 30 handle. <laughs> I've been watching it for a while. See if it's going to dip below 30 and gets down there, gets close and it keeps bouncing out there in terms of vol on our last show, 93 and three quarters. Coming in to start of today's show, 91.85. So down not quite two points, but pretty darn close. Skew wise, following a similar trajectory to what we're seeing out there in ETH. It was negative 435 on our last show, negative 8.75 coming into the start of this show. So the skew in both ETH and Solana turning negative. Does that mean we're going to break the par strike in ETH and break 30 in Solana? Who knows? We shall find out. But the options are certainly leaning to the dark side out there. In terms of size positions, this is where things are interesting. We talked about this on the show last week with Greg, just how completely different <laughs> the OI setup is in Solana options than it is in ETH and in Bitcoin. We just broke them down, obviously, two to one, roughly, in Bitcoin and um, over four to one calls over puts in ETH. So the other two are still very call heavy from an OI perspective. Solana, maybe because it's a newer addition to the game here. Either way, it's pretty much two to one puts over calls. 606,000 puts open this week. It's up another 99,000 contracts. So they're adding some OI on the put side. The calls, 312. That's up about 33,000. So still two to one puts over calls out there. That's a very unique OI setup. Obviously, the skew is still markedly negative, but different stuff cooking out here from an OI perspective. And that's certainly something... That's worthy of watching. Let's see what the size positions are out there right now in Solana. Number five, we have the 30 strike, 57,000 contracts open there. And again, it's been interesting to watch looking at the, how the OI breaks down over there on GVAL. You could see that, you know, pretty much the strikes below the at the money strike, it is nothing but puts. <laughs> so there is a ton of puts open to the downside there. Uh, unlike the other products where there is a little bit of, of mixture on those strikes, you can find some calls. And some puts usually, but uh, out in Solana, it's usually one or the other. <laughs> Not many of both. Number four, we have the 32 strike at a 70,000 contracts open. That is a newcomer this week to the top five. Number three, the 20 strike, 83,000 contracts open. That's up about 1,000. Number two, the 24 strike, 111,000 contracts. That's up 36,000 contracts. So some folks piling into the 24 strike and given what we're seeing out there from an OI and SKU perspective, those were puts. <laughs> And the number one size position in Solana options this week, the 28 strike, 131,000 contracts opens up about 26,000. And again, get more seen out there, pretty much mostly puts. So a lot of downside puts trading it up out there in Solana. In terms of uh, trading it up, how much action, how much paper has, has been going up since our last show? Well, the big day was also the 21st. It was also Wednesday last week, 182,000 contracts on the tape. That compares to the week before the 110. And the week before, where we first really started tracking Solana on the show with 145,000 contracts on the tape. So limited data set right now, but intriguing stuff. Certainly something we're going to keep an eye on. Uh, good old Ripple. Good old XRP. It's had a nice run since our last show. 37.6 cents last week. 47.6 cents this week. So up a whopping pretty much exactly a dime since our last show. So those rumors are starting to coalesce around it. It is starting to lift it. I know for a lot of you, it's kind of moot because you can't really get access to it. So uh, intriguing stuff, something interesting to watch. It will be interesting to see if we have some resolution one way or the other with XRP. I think that will satisfy a lot of people in terms of at least we'll know. Then we can proceed from there. Good old Doge. About six cents coming into our today's show. It was 5.7%, 5.7 cents this time last week. So 
up about a whopping third of a cent. Not a heck of a lot of movement out there. Litecoin, 52.95 coming in to start of today's show. 51 and about 51.40 or so on our last show. So up about a buck and a half. So some crypto are managing to buck the downside trend that we're seeing in the rest of the markets out there, listeners. Uh, Cardano, 44.6 cents. Last show, 44.5 cents this week. So kind of unched out there. Polkadot, six and a quarter last week. Six and a half bucks this week. So managing to rally about a quarter over the course of the past week. And our old friend, good old Shiba, it was pretty much unched. Still hanging out at point oh 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 one one. You've got questions about crypto. Who doesn't? It's time to find out the answers to your crypto questions. All right, everybody. Welcome to your questions segment. Everyone's got questions about crypto these days. Let's dive in to this one here from Marcus. Marcus wants to know, has Mark been trading a Bitto lately? Maybe it's worthy of inclusion on your show. You know, we do talk a lot about Bitto. Not always just on this show. We talked about it on other programs. It's actually been a frequent discussion topic on the advisors option, which is interesting as we're seeing more asset managers and advisors start to dip their toes in the crypto waters outside of Uncle Mike, obviously. Uh, so we have talked about it there. We actually did a pretty in-depth breakdown on it a few months ago on the advisors option. and found that the, the tracking has actually been a lot better than a lot of us expected. That kind of surprised us. I think most of us, myself included, Assumed when Bitto launched, it was going to have a lot of drag issues as a result of the futures rolling. And so it was going to not track very well and lose a lot of value as a result. And yet uh, we have not really seen that. It was only off about 1.5%, I think, from the price of Bitcoin. So it tracked fairly well. In terms of action, yeah, we have talked about it also popping up every once in a while on Oddity. We talked about it recently on Options Bootcamp as well. So it's popping up on a lot of our shows of late and let's pull it up for ourselves. Bitto coming into the end of the show here, 1180, up about a quarter uh, just today. So a little bit of, of a lift. And in terms of action, Bitto actually is still a very active product. It's been hanging out around 60 odd thousand contracts, ADV, or of course, average daily volume listeners, where all your newcomers out there. And it's still right around there, about 65,000. So that's putting up a lot of paper any given day. I happen to pull it up while we're talking again here, listeners, to see what the top positions are out there. Let's do a quick top 10 in Bitto options right now. Number 10, we have 8,400 of the October 12 puts. Number 9, we have 9,700 of the January 2024. So going out a little bit, 65 calls. I wonder if those are probably maybe a little bit vestigial positions. Of course, we don't go back that far in Bitto. We're coming up on the one-year anniversary, so you can't have them... Going back that long, but uh, all the way out to Jan 2024, 65. I have to imagine those probably weren't opened recently, but you know what? There is one way to find out really quickly, listeners. I'm going to see if I can if I can dive into, oh, of course, my system is not playing ball with me now. There we go. There we go. Let's go back. To, let's play ball for Marcus here. There we go. <laughs> all right. But uh, slowly but surely coming up on my right. While we wait for my system to catch up, listeners, let's finish the rest of this uh, top 10 here. Number eight, 11,000 of the October 10 puts. Number seven, 17,000 of the October 13 puts. Number six, 18,000 of the SEP 11 puts. Number five, 18,400 of the DEES 10 puts. Number four, 18,800 of the October expiring on the 7th. So in the weeklies, 10 puts. Number three, 21,000 of the DEES 10 puts. A numero due here. We've got 28,000 of the DEES 15 calls. And rounding out the top 10 out there in Bitto right now, listeners, 43,000 of the SEP expiring next week. So on the weeklies, the 30th, 10 puts. It's 10 strikes. Seems to be a pretty active strike out there these days. Let's see. Like, my system is finally playing ball. And listen, let's see if I can find out when these Jan... 65 calls were opened. There we go. They were opened. It's like a good chunk of them were opened back on April 19th when Bitto was about $26. And let's see. Looks like paper was selling a lot of these for two around $2.28. So they took advantage to overwrite some of these. Then they're happy on that leg. I'm probably going to think they sold those against 
some underlying positions. And obviously, they're not as happy on that because in Bitto, you know, south of 12 bucks right now, it was about $26 back on April 19th. So, yes, it is an interesting product. Long way around to answering your question, Marcus. We do talk about it a lot. Not as often on this show, interestingly enough, because you don't get a lot of questions about it. They come in on other shows, interestingly enough. But it is an option, pun intended, for a lot of you out there. If you want to trade options on Bitcoin in your traditional trading account, you don't need to open up a crypto account. You don't need to open up a futures account. It can go in your regular, whatever you have, TD or whatever the heck you're using out there to trade options, E-Trade, whatever it is. You can trade Bitto options in it. So that is an attractive thing for a lot of people out there. You can take advantage of some of the skew we're seeing. Maybe you want to sell some puts. Maybe you want to buy some calls, whatever the case may be. Maybe you want to do both. You want to do spreads. There's 65,000 contracts going up out there. So there's enough paper out there to at least allow you to trade around the front few months and get some decent stuff. Let's see what's going on out there today. Big trade today. 10,000 of the D10 puts. So this 10 strike continues to fascinate and amaze folks. Let's see out here. If you come out, you want to trade some D10 puts today. They're trading for 90 cents. Right now. So the December 10 put in bid O listeners, we're at 1180 right now. Would you rather sell it or buy it for 90 cents? It's like someone bought about 4,700 of them this morning. Someone also sold about 2,500 of them this morning as well. So a lot of back and forth paper on this strike. 90 cents for the D10 puts. Interesting. I don't hate that as a sale. If you want to use that as a way to get in on some lower levels on bid O, that'll certainly do the job. And of course, I like going out that far at my premium sales usually, but I don't hate that. And then, of course, uh, if you get it put to you, you're getting it at a pretty decent level. You're still getting Bitto at, of course, 90 cents below 10 bucks. You're coming in at $9.10, listeners. So that's a pretty significant discount to where it's trading right now. Let me pull up really quickly uh, a chart here for Bitto, see if we can see how low did we get during all the madness out here. The low is only 1167 so... Actually, the low is 11.37, so we touched 11.67 today. So we are flirting with the lows, but we're not quite at them. That was back in earlier in September we hit those. So you got a long way to go to get to 90.10. I'm not, I'm not recommending a trade for you listeners, but it is intriguing to see these puts printing 90 cents all day long. I'm curious to know what you folks think. And Marcus, is it worthy of inclusion in the show? Yeah, it's a pretty active product, so maybe we could add it in. I'm curious what you folks think. Do you want us to add Bitto alongside everything else? We could do it. I mean, just add more data to the show. Why not? We already added Solana. Make our producers work even more. It's up to you folks. What do you guys want to see? You want to add Bitto to the show? Hit us up. Let us know. All right, listeners, that's going to do it for this Just the Facts, ma'am, edition of the Crypto Rundown. We'll be back again for all you pro folks tomorrow with a great pro Q&A tomorrow. We're still making sure all the schedules are lined up for everybody over there. So keep an eye on your members' hotline and your email. You'll know exactly what we have lined up for you pro folks. Tomorrow, Wednesday, of course, Education Wednesday coming at you with not just one but two options boot camps and not just one but two options playbook radio. So it's going to be a busy Education Wednesday. Back again on Thursday for This Week in Futures Options, which a lot of folks should be checking out if you're listening to this show, as well as the Option Block. And Friday, Ball Views, and for all you pro folks, options oddities remember if you want to check out the pro see what you're missing the options insider.com slash pro is the place to go we got to get on out of here but we'll see you back here next monday another episode of the crypto rundown stay safe out there everybody this program is brought to you by genesis volatility also known as gvol home of institutional grade crypto options analytics whether you're trading CFI options or DeFi options, cryptocurrencies move. Use GVOL Analytics to analyze implied volatility, model realized volatility, structure positions, and unlock alpha. For more information, visit gvol.io. That's G-V-O-L dot I-O. Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. 
For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.